Hello, we are beginning our unit four um, on adding whole numbers. So in your math book on page 47 and 48, um, these pages you need to go over with a family member, pages 47 and 48, and that will talk to them about what we are working on this week. Then students, if you will go ahead and turn your math book to page 49, that is where we are beginning today, is page 49. So like I said before, almost everything we do in fourth grade is going to involve word problems. And this is no different. Um, we will have word problems in just about everything we do. So this is lesson four, session one. You should also have your um, card or little anchor chart that you made that asks you the questions that we use when we do word problems and a pencil to work through these problems with me as I'm working them out. So on page 49, Katie has 3,437 stamps in her collection and Steve has 942 stamps in his collection. How many stamps do Katie and Steve have in all? So our first question is, what is this problem about? Well, if I look up here, we are talking about um, the amount of stamps that Katie and Steve have in their collection is what we're talking about. What information is important? So we're gonna circle that. We're, it's important to know that Katie has 3,437 stamps, and it's important to know that Steve has 942 stamps. There's also another, um, there's another two words in here that are important that a lot of people don't notice or realize that are important, but they are very important. It's this right here. In all is very important because this in all tells me that this is going to be an addition problem. So I am going to add to solve it. Next, what am I trying to find out? How many stamps do Katie and Steve have in all? That's what I'm trying to find out. And last is, can I draw a model to help me solve this problem? And the answer is yes, I can, but not all of you are going to need this model. If you are going to draw a model for this problem, it would look like this. This is called a tape diagram. And so you would have two tapes here. The first would be um, Katie, and she has 3,437. And over here, this would be Steve, and he has 942. And then what we are trying to find here is our answer. So this is our answer right here. And I could even put a question mark. So the only way to solve how many total stamps they have in their collection is by adding these two together. So I'm going to do that. It is very important that whenever you're, that whenever you're adding numbers that you make sure that you line them up in the zeros place. So if you struggle with remembering to line your numbers up, another model that you can draw or you can use is your place value chart that we gave you um, that has the ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, so on. So if you struggle with lining up your numbers, it's important to remember that you always have to have a number in the ones column. So if I first write Katie's number, I would have seven, three, four, three. And then down here for Steve's column, it's two, four, nine. A lot of students at this age get confused and they'll line up the nine under the three, but three thousands is not worth the same as 900. So you wanna make sure to get those numbers lined up. So if it's easier for you to have a place value chart or to solve it on your place value chart, you're more than welcome to do that. So you would solve it like that. And so seven plus two is nine, four plus three is seven, 
9 plus 4 is 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and then I carry my 1. So then right here I have 3 and there's nothing, but I have to add 1, so it's 4. Don't forget your comma to separate the first three digits in this period to the thousands column. And then it's not just 4,379, it's 4,379 stamps in all. So if I add the total number of stamps that Katie and Steve have, it, the total is 4,379. Let's move on to page 50. Okay. On page 50, it says, explain how you can find the number of stamps Katie and Steve have in all. We've already done this. We did this together. This is where you would explain in word form how you would do that. So you would say you add together the number of stamps each of them have to find the total. Okay, and there you go. Look ahead. There are many ways to add numbers. For example, you can use drawings or base 10 blocks. You can also break apart numbers to add, add numbers by place value, or use an algorithm. An algorithm, which is a very important math word, is a set of steps used to solve a problem. So, an algorithm is just a set of steps. It's a fancy word, but it's just saying the steps to solve a problem. When you line up numbers by place value, you use an algorithm. And what that means is when we're lining up our numbers by what's in the ones place, the tens place, the hundreds, and so on, we are using an algorithm of how we are doing that. Suppose you want to add greater numbers such as 35,705 and 23,241. Without adding, circle the strategy that might be best for adding. Now, when we get big numbers like this and even the one on the other page, can we draw a picture? Yes, we can draw a picture and have the numbers in there, but are you easily going to be able to add these numbers from a tape diagram? No, you're not going to be able to do this easily. Even if you line it up like this and you're trying to get this total, you're still going to end up having to add them together like this. So our best choice would be to line up by place value. And we're explaining our choice by saying a drawing shows us what we need to do, but it does not line up the numbers so we can easily add them together. And there's that. Look at problem two above. Would the sum be the same whether you draw a picture, lined up play face value to add, or used another strategy? Yes. It would be the same answer because you are adding all of them. Okay? Oh, I'm sorry, you can't see that. Yes, it would be the same answer because you are adding all of them. So no matter which way you decide to use, you should still get the same answer no matter which way because we are just adding the numbers together. Okay. 
Now over here on this page, it's asking us to give some examples and a definition of an algorithm. So um, I would really like to change one of these to definition, okay? So I'm changing this one to definition and it's the steps to solve a problem, okay? So um, you can pick any number, 23,561 plus 10,819. This would show you an algorithm because it's steps to solve a problem. If we write first line up the numbers, then add starting with the ones place. This is another example of an algorithm. So see if you can come up with three other examples for algorithms. Okay. You may pause this video if you'd like to do that now. Now we're going to go down here. Describe the steps of an algorithm you can use to add 4,000 562 plus 3,679. So the way that you would solve this problem because they are asking for the steps of the algorithm is you would say what you do first, what you do second, what you do third, fourth, fifth, so on, however many steps you need. So first, line up numbers. Starting with ones. Second, add numbers. Starting with ones. Then tens, hundreds, so on. And that is how you would write the steps for the algorithm. Now if you turn to page 52, go ahead and solve this problem on your own. You should be um, writing a problem to do that. When you are finished with this problem, take it and show it to your parents. Have them check your addition, okay? And I will see you for session two.